Summer after college, I took a trip with a friend of mine named Charlie, who's actually a girl. And Charlie was very sophisticated and worldly. She spoke seven languages by then. And she invited me to meet her in Paris and travel. And I had never been out of the States. I had never really traveled anywhere. And I was terrified, but I wanted to do it. And I saved all my work-study money from school and my financial aid. And I had a couple of jobs. And I squirreled away money to do this. And it was very dramatic because um, the, the understory was that Charlie was in love with this guy, Roberto, that she met at the Russian Language Institute. And she was going to be traveling with him through Europe with me and her brother. And then they would go to Italy, where she would say goodbye to Roberto, go to Greece, and meet her real boyfriend, <laughs> Cleo. So we, I, I went there, and I had instructions from her Greek boyfriend at home how to find Charlie. And everything about the instructions were wrong. The phone number was wrong. The address was wrong. So I got to Paris. I had never been anywhere. I was in the subway. I was nervous. I tried to find her. It took me forever to figure out you had to buy a jetton, which was like a token, to make a phone call. And I tried calling these numbers, and they didn't work. And I, I knew I had the wrong address and the wrong phone number, and I didn't know what to do. But I was determined to find my friend in Paris. And it took three days. And I went to hotels. And some of them were seedy, and I would look at them and get weirded out, and then I would get on a bus and travel around until I found a neighborhood that looked okay, talk to old ladies or try to, but I had no French. I didn't speak any other languages. I spoke nothing. So I took myself with a little book, and I, I rehearsed this one sentence that I thought might help me, which was, je regrette, je ne parle pas français. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle, pa parle anglais. And people were so kind to me, they thought I tried. I tried to make one sentence. And they were kind, and they spoke with me and asked me what I was doing, and they tried to help me. Well, anyway, I finally unscrambled the address, and I found my friend. And we traveled all through uh, Europe together, and there was a lot of drama with Roberto, and the love that was going to be ending when she had to go to the other boyfriend. And um, so then we got, we got to Italy, and we took a ferry, and we went to Greece, and she wore giant dark sunglasses. <laughs> so she, it, would, it would hide the tears when she met with the other boyfriend. And I wasn't supposed to tell anything about Roberto or what was going on. So we get, we get to Greece, and we start this wonderful adventure. And the bonus was Cleo, the, the Greek boyfriend from America, was meeting four or five of his Greek pals that he grew up with, and, and they all had motorcycles. So we were going to drive around with them and go island hopping, and I was the only other girl. And Charlie was taken, so they would have little fights in Greek over who could get me to ride on the back of the bike. So I was having a great summer. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, and I was trying to pick up a little, a little Greek here and there. I could say a few things. But the main event that they, what they did mostly is they went to the beach, and they were naked all day at the beach. And they were all brown, very brown people. And um, I can't be at the beach naked. And I don't want to be at the beach naked because I'm a modest person about physical stuff. And I have issues. So I was not going to do that. But I envied them and their freedom. And I wanted to be at the beach naked too. And, um, but I wasn't. So. <laughs> Until one morning, I woke up very early, and I thought, oh my gosh, I could take one of the scooters to the beach by myself early, and I could, I could go naked on the beach. No one will be there. No one will see. I'll have my Greek experience. I'll go in the ocean. I'm doing this. So I took the scooter, and I drove down there, and I, I pushed it against a, like a rock with caves, and, I, and no one was around. And I went naked, and I went in the water, and I watched the... The, the sky and the smells, and it was so beautiful, and I was so proud of myself. Look what you're doing. No one's around, but you're doing it. And I was naked, and I was free, and then I realized I better get back to the bike. And um, so I decided I had enough, and I walked to the bike, but I couldn't find the, and I had my bike and my clothes all in that spot. <laughs> So I could not find the bike or the clothes. And I thought, well, maybe I drifted. Maybe, maybe I was to the right or the left. I tried to look at the water and gauge the, um, do I only have 27 seconds left? Oh, OK. So anyway, um, I never found the bike or the clothes. So I was naked. And I had to get out of there because it's sunny, and I'm white and pale, and I got to get out of there. So I was very nervous. My feet were burning. I said, I got to walk to the road. And I was more worried about my feet and getting a sunburn than that I was naked. 
So these four guys came along in an open Jeep and I think I'm, okay. They came along in an open Jeep and they, they looked at me and they looked very serious. They weren't laughing at me. One of them took off his windbreaker and he, he gave it to me quickly and he didn't look at me and I put it on and another one gave me a towel for my bottom half and then they gave me a hand to come into the Jeep and I thought, they're gonna be all right. They'll help me, they're not laughing. So they, uh, they, they got me in there and, and they tried to ask me where I was but I realized I didn't know where I was or lived or whatever. They drove me all around the island to every village. I finally saw where, where I was staying. They dropped me off with a note, and the note said, come tonight with your friends to this restaurant and meet us and have dinner and have drinks at my uncle's restaurant and return the jacket and the <laughs> towel. <laughs> so we all went, we went, and, and, and it was wonderful. It was a big table with all of us and laughing and food and wine, and everything was great and music, and finally they uh, asked me to go in and order some more bread, but unfortunately the word in Greek for bread is very similar to the word for cock. So they told me, and I went in and said, Signome, more posoli paracolo. And uh, the guy came out, and everybody was dancing and laughing, and it ended well. Oh. <laughs>